The founder of Oculus has returned to the virtual reality space, now bringing his expertise to the battlefield. Enduril just announced its partnership with Microsoft to up-level the United States Army's integrated visual augmentation system. Tomer Lucky, who founded the defense startup in 2017 after selling Oculus, said in a press release the IVA's program is his top priority. The mixed reality headsets help soldiers see more of the battlefield and detect threats in real time. And Dural integrated its lattice software to enhance the system's ability to detect drones and airborne threats. Lattice is an AI-powered software platform that provides real-time situational awareness and automated threat detection across domains, including air, land, and sea. Microsoft said IVAs, with its integrated sensors, will help soldiers see everything on the battlefield and make better decisions. The Army initiated the IVAs program in 2018 as part of its efforts to equip soldiers with advanced technology. The program initially focused on enhanced situational awareness, decision-making, and survivability. Microsoft played a key role in the program, adapting its HoloLens augmented reality tech to meet military needs. The headsets provide real-time information overlays, including maps, enemy positions, and mission-critical data directly in a soldier's field of vision. We're adding 360 situational awareness, so we've added a variety of cameras that supplement the existing vehicle cameras. Um, so instead of just having the gun camera and relatively small forward and reverse cameras, now we've got relatively high-end cameras all the way around the vehicle, both day and night vision. And the soldiers wearing the new IVAS technology are able to use those cameras and access it while they're in route to mission. So instead of staring at a blank steel wall, they can keep up with what's going on around the vehicle and uh, they can also switch to a tactical map mode. Data from various onboard and external sensors, including thermal imaging, night vision, and weapon-mounted cameras, give soldiers a comprehensive view of their surroundings. Soldiers can use the wearables to navigate through difficult terrain and urban combat settings. They can accurately identify and engage targets using built-in tools like rangefinders and aiming systems. Training scenarios can be run directly through the headset, simulating combat environments and tactics. The system also tracks soldiers' vital signs, like heart rate and fatigue, delivering commanders real-time updates on the physical condition of their units. Lattice's open architecture means it can work alongside other military hardware and software, so the system can grow and adapt with new advancements. Lucky founded Oculus in 2012. For the first time ever, virtual reality is actually viable as something you can use at home. If you look back to the 80s and 90s again, uh, those companies didn't fail because of bad business or bad marketing or because consumers thought it was weird. It's because people just didn't have machines that could render an experience that was anything close to comfortable or compelling. And that's, that's all changed. His Oculus Rift prototype quickly gained attention through a viral Kickstarter campaign. Oculus VR was acquired by Facebook, now Meta, in 2014. You had this, you know, virtual reality headset and these people, and everyone's fascinated by it. And we didn't really think Facebook. Did you ever envision that, that this could happen? In the beginning, uh, when we started the company, definitely not. I mean, we had set out that we would just do this on our own, our own way. And really, the very beginning, we just thought this would be a fun project to work on. So we launched this thing on Kickstarter, and we didn't have any idea how big it would get or where we'd go with it. Lucky departed Facebook three years later in March 2017 amid controversy about his support for President Trump and shifting leadership dynamics. He quickly launched Enduro with a focus on transforming military capabilities. In November 2022, he unveiled the concept of a VR headset that kills the user if they die in the virtual world. Though Lucky did develop the concept, it remains a conceptual device. Enduro has experienced rapid growth since its founding quickly gaining attention for its autonomous systems, AI-driven platforms, and sensor fusion for military and national security applications. The startup has secured many high-profile defense contracts working with the Department of Defense, Border Security, and allied governments. Enduril also just announced it's expanding its advanced technology into space. The company is developing systems to improve awareness of space threats and help control space operations. Its lattice software will be used to automatically manage satellites and space assets. Enduro plans to launch its own space system by 2025. Enduro also recently unveiled its new cruise missiles that can be mass-produced twice as fast for 30% less than other missiles. 
the defense startup just introduced its new Barracuda autonomous aerial vehicles intended for rapid manufacturing. They're hyperscaling the missiles with simpler designs, fewer parts, modular construction, and advanced in-house software. The designs feature 50% fewer parts. The assembly is highly automated, requiring 95% fewer tools to build. The Barracuda M family has three models. The Barracuda 100 is lightweight and launchable from the ground and air. It's meant for quick, short missions. The mid-sized model, the Barracuda 250, fits in the weapons bay of fighter jets. It balances range, speed, and payload capacity. The Barracuda 500 has a range exceeding 500 nautical miles, reaching targets over 926 kilometers away. In an interview with Bloomberg Technology, Enduro founder Palmer Lucky highlighted that war games showed U.S. running out of critical munitions within days of a conflict with expansionist dictatorships like China. I'll tell you how I think about things. I don't think the United States needs to be the world police. I think we need to be the world gun store. We need to be able to provide our allies and our partners around the world with the tools that they need to turn themselves into prickly porcupines that nobody wants to step on. And I think that sending American lives overseas, boots on the ground, is not going to be the future of how we support uh, support our friends around the world. I think it's going to be making sure that we can make things at a scale where they believe that our support for them is more than just words. We can actually send them the things that we say that we're willing to send them. I think Ukraine has really exposed this weakness in the United States foreign policy strategy, where we say we support all of these people, but they look and say, well, they can't even manufacture the basics like artillery shells. And Duro's core product, Lattice, powers the Barracuda. The AI-powered platform integrates all steps of the production process, design, development, testing, and manufacturing. The setup allows for autonomous operations without relying on real-time communication links that can be jammed by adversaries. Enduro plans to build a new factory named Arsenal One to make weapons and military systems faster and in larger quantities. A location hasn't been disclosed yet, but plans call for over 5 million square feet and thousands of workers. How, how does this build out happen? What does it mean in terms of production? How quickly you can bring that online? We have to identify a site, uh, you know, okay. work out the arrangements with the state that we're going into, uh, and that will be a process that we'll be figuring out in the next couple of months. Um, and then, as far as build out and things like that, obviously, it depends on the site and you know how ready it is to scale. The factory will make many types of military systems, like drones and missiles, using simple designs and parts that are easy to get. Enduro is aiming for tens of thousands of military systems per year, far exceeding traditional defense manufacturing companies. The factory will also build new types of unmanned aircraft for the Air Force that work with manned planes to improve air combat abilities. Also a big milestone for the US Air Force to be building and developing an autonomous fighter jet for the first time at scale. This is really an incredibly important program, not just for Anderil or for the Air Force, but for our country. U.S. government is pushing defense companies to deploy similar tactics to accelerate military system development. Traditional defense companies use older systems that are slow to change. Anduro uses digital engineering to quickly update its products for new threats. The Government Accountability Office says the U.S. lags behind Russia and China in hypersonic weapons and shipbuilding because of its lack of agility. Despite billions spent, the Pentagon hasn't fielded any hypersonic weapons, which fly more than five times the speed of sound. The Navy's struggles with timely shipbuilding are also well noted. Navy ships take years longer to deliver compared to commercial projects, complicating planning and budgeting. While commercial ships get delayed too, the length and cost overruns are multiple times longer and pricier with the Navy. Last year, the Department of Defense enacted its 5000.97 instruction, requiring new military system programs to use digital engineering methods to accelerate delivery.